Welcome to episode 87 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Drugs. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery, recognizing that tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the idea of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City can- City can- City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision that I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view drugs. With that, let's dive right in. Pastor Tubb. Hey. How are you? I'm splendid. He is splendid, which is good because he's been here forever. Has I have been here for a while already. Yeah, I'm like, got, like, my should, clock literally right says... Like it's got tub, a little. I, I don't want to show it to you, but it literally says like "past welcoming." Like, oh, what well, that yeah. usually happens the first few minutes so, of being in the house. Like he's so, already gone a bit too far. Yeah, Can no. we record and be done already? Right. And um, so let me let me uh, let me ask. Okay, you didn't read our verses. You didn't read our things out of the book. Oh, you know what? I don't even have. Oh Lord, I'm behind on that. I I, I totally forgot that. Where's the Where's the book? The book is here. So excuse me while I grab I it. We'll just... I got one. Oh, you got it. I got All right, it. He's gonna I got do it. it. I got All it. Right. I got so, it. So. This is what unprepared look like. Unprepared looks like. So when people say, wow, DL, you really got things put together. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, right. There you go. All right. So here we are. We got, so drugs. Here's what it says in the book. So my, mind you, look, you can... we are doing Introduction to the Libertarian Party. He's going over 25 issues. We are expanding up on them so that libertarians maybe have a better idea of how they might present them. And then non-libertarians go, oh, that's, that's a pretty good why, idea. That's why those libertarians are like that. That's why they, those those guys. We are, are like that because of drugs. Yeah. But <clears throat> so here's what I said. Whoa. <laughs> that was a nasty jump all of a sudden. I know, right? So it says libertarians would end prohibition of substances like marijuana. Like, let's point that out. The war on drugs does more harm than good. And it's a violation of people's freedom to do whatever they want. So long as they are not hurting others. As with alcohol, if you drive and kill someone, then you are hurting someone else, and libertarians obviously oppose that. Private entities, like schools, businesses, and individuals, should set their own policies for drug for drug use and or drug testing instead of leaving this matter up to government. So the first question that I have... For me, for, for the world, you, for me. For you. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Pastor Tub, mm-hmm. do you do drugs? I absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> nah. Nope. And done. Uh, probably... All right, y'all have a good day. We'll talk to you later. I probably don't either. Pro- probably not. <laughs> okay. So now, first for first and foremost, when we say, do you do drugs? What we are obviously talking about are the illicit drugs. Because if I ask Pastor Tub, do you ever take a Tylenol? Yeah, actually, unfortunately, I am now at that age, right. 47, that there is a pill that I take daily. Is it blue? It is not blue. I'm oh, only because that would be a really only weird forty-seven. Conversation for like, us hey, to have. let's talk about the bigger problem. So, no, the, the, I do now. So we're, I know what we're talking about here because honestly, now I am talk at about the, the age where... problem in the room. <laughs> I feel this like conversation. I feel is like we're done bad. already. I feel like we're right. already so... done. So, all right, we're so way no, comfortable with each other. No, folks. I do not do drugs. Okay, okay. <clears throat> we, so when we, we we're talking about doing ah, tongue tied. When we're talking about not doing drugs, what we're talking about like is you know things like marijuana or cocaine or heroin, some of those other drugs, ones where you take them recreationally, mm-hmm. explicitly to bring about a high or something like do you, that. Do you know I've never taken any drugs, never. Oh and, wow! And I always want to make this very clear because people are like, "Gosh, oh, because he's a Christian." Let me tell you, I was not raised up in the church. This was right. not something that. So I was never this idea of like, "Oh, it's all because of my faith." My faith had nothing to do with right. It. My it was just that I've just never done them. Right. Um, and I think that probably part of the problem is seeing others stuff along those lines. Right. Um, but I've always been kind of like, "Hey, don't really care if you do if you do or not." Uh, right. Most people kind of came to expect that Tubbs not going to. 
we don't even bother him right. with, with, with it anymore. Um, but now I, I do tend to be pretty open. I, I don't hide behind the fact that there was a stretch of time inside of there where maybe uh, some marijuana went from my possession into other people's possession. Right. Stuff along those lines. But but that's always you know, been the we always You know, we always had to have grace for people that were just holding it for a friend. Yes, I was holding it for a friend, and I will bring the money straight to him once we're done here. Um, but but you know what's funny is okay, so that right there is it fits exactly to my thinking now. Mm-hmm. Uh, my thinking is very much make it legal doesn't mean people are going to do it. Right. I had it with me all the time. Right. Never once did it. Right. Because that wasn't what my draws. Because you follow the ten crack commandments. You don't do your own. Don't do Good. your own. Good. So <laughs> is that inside this? But there's the premise of this. Even if because. Here's what happens. We know libertarians are known as the weed and gun party. Right. Okay. And, and I think that we get this lumped in thinking and we, and we try to explain to them. Is it like, so we don't, I don't want everybody to go get high. Right. I, I don't want them to. Right. I want them to be able to. Right. Here's what I've been mentioning a lot. Because I know we said we're not going to really spend much time on this topic. Right. So here's what I have been telling people a lot lately. Mm-hmm. Okay, listen, I tell them once again, I think you should be allowed to. I think that uh, people getting arrested for marijuana is horrible. Right. You, you know, um, and, and there's a lot of proof behind that. Look at Spike. Spike will get on any of the where it's at. And he's going to say, hey, here's a bad idea for this. And, and he right. maps it up beautifully. Yep. But here's been my kind of explaining it to people. I said, we're talking about weed in particular, marijuana in particular. And I say, you know what? The people who are getting high. They're not the ones going out causing problems. Right. Like they're, they're, they're not. They're not the ones going and robbing stores and stuff like that. You know when that becomes a problem for marijuana is when they're forced to go into a sketchy neighborhood. Right. So in a neighborhood they don't belong in, but this is where they need to get it from. Right. So they end up in a situation that's not good for them. Right. And so problems happen inside yes. of that. Now, if they could go from this neighborhood and go to the little shop up there next to the Publix, mm-hmm. guess what? The crime aspect of it, the trouble right. aspect, it's gone. Right. Well, it's, it's like a... you mentioned about prohibition, mm-hmm. right? Prohibition. I bet people, libertarians may know this, but I bet a lot of people don't realize that some, one of the first gun control laws in the country um, was in 1932. I may have that date wrong, but it was the Valentine's Day massacre. Mm-hmm. And that was actually mob on mob violence. Okay. So f- effectively what happened, uh, somebody crossed paths with the mob. They lined up like seven people. Yeah. They like lined them up and took their Tommy guns, like she shot them, right? So what does that have to do with drugs? Well, in the time, it was actually, it must've been earlier than 1930s, I think, because it was during the prohibition time. Yeah. And one of the things that made the mob very powerful, or one that one of them that gave them a lot of um, uh, a lot of power, was the, the this prohibition uh, on alcohol. And one of the things mm-hmm. that gives gangs today their power is that there is a lot of money in drugs, and because it's illegal, then that money is basically circulated in the black market. Where gangs, whether they're the Crips and the Bloods or whether they're, um, you know, you know, some mob family, mm-hmm. if a mob family were to even exist, of course, because they, they they don't, so right, no thing based in the movies. But if they did, you uh-huh. know, like based on the movies that we've seen, you know, this is where a lot of this activity operates, and and there is what happens is there's a cost mm-hmm. to everything. There is a cost to acquire it there's a cost to grow it to ship it you know transport it all that stuff that cost rises when it's illegal so the and, and part of that cost and, and you pay for the is risk. not just you monetary pay for the risk. Mm-hmm. right it's not just monetary but it becomes physical um so if you, if we were to say decriminalize marijuana mm-hmm. um and then like say some of the cigarette companies were to get in on it well the cigarette companies aren't shooting each other now they may be doing some other dastardly things. Right, but yeah, they're they're, they're not on the streets. Right, but they're not on the streets right. shoot, shooting each other, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think this is exactly what happens. You're talking about like, hey, if it was if it was easier on the corner yep. that you could go get, then a lot of this cost goes down. Not only the monetary cost, so all the concerns about like people are gonna spend all their money, well it becomes less of a concern because it's cheaper. Right. And then it's also cheaper in terms of people, the human cost, mm-hmm. because it, th- th- there's not this necessary, there's no need for violence because you can do it. You don't have to worry they, about trying to hide it. You don't worry yep. about some guy double crossing you and, and talking to the FBI. You don't have to worry about that. It's, so then so, you don't have to shoot him. 
Right, exactly. 1929 was the year. 1929, uh, okay. But so he, here's my thinking on this. Like, I, I have truly become this advocate of for personal consumption. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I've really kind of opened up to the idea that you should be allowed to grow some at your house. Right. Now, once again, personal consumption. Okay. Because if, if we want to legalize it, but we're still going to encourage people to take it from there and go sell it to that guy, we're running into the same problem again. Okay. So that's why I say personal consumption. Anybody can grow and, and people who smoke it can determine, hey, yeah, this is whatever guidelines. I, I'm not worried about that part right now. I'm more of a let them be allowed to grow it in their house. Okay. Do what they want to do with it enough that they can smoke and maybe their friend comes over. Hey, we're going to smoke a little bit. Don't care. Right. Okay. The reason why I say personal consumption, because we run that risk again, that we start going, well, I don't really want to grow it in my house, but my friend gets it over here, but I got to go into his neighborhood. You just went, you walked right back into the same problem. Again. Okay. Okay. So I do, I'm not big on the, I'm going to grow it so I can sell it to somebody else. I'm going to grow because I want to use it. Okay. Okay. And then if we want to work on that, I, you know, how everything has to so starting So would you point. oppose if we were to say, hey, we're just going to decriminalize, you know, all in one fell swoop? Would you oppose it? Nah. Oh, okay. No, you're just not, not at all. A, you're just not a super fan of it. Yeah. No, no. Like okay. like I said, I, I just, I don't care if they do it anyway. Right. Because here's the thing. People who are going to do it are already doing it. Right. Like, let's just, uh, right. I would love the fact that if there are people that I know, I mean, I probably know some people who get high and I, I would love to know that, guess what? They can get it safely. Right. That they don't have to. Right. Run. Like if, if I know people who are close to me who happen to be smoking, I, I, I want to know, like, I might not. I'm not going to encourage. Like, I'm not going to be like, okay, it's legal now. Why? Hey, what? I'm not going to stand in the church and go, hey, everybody go get weed now. How great is this? Right. Like, I still don't want it for my kids and I don't right. want it for other people. Like, I, like I'm not going to right. encourage people to go do it. Right. But at the same time, I'm going to be like, okay. Well, like, it's the, it's there the are idea. There are far worse things that could be happening. It's the idea of non interference, right? Yeah. And that's what people need to recognize. A lot of the libertarian ideology is really focused on non interference. Don't interfere with somebody else's right to do something. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you have to support it. All right. Right. We um. Let's see. Do we do we talk about sex work at any point? Uh, we have. We we've talked about it some. Like on the podcast. On the podcast. Yeah. Um. Because Especially I know, know that we make that much of an impact that we don't even remember what uh, we're talking. Right. About. Right. Well, we talk so much. It's hard to remember. Like, man, we have such great about? ideas. I know. And, and just one runs into the know, next we, one. We've got so, so many ideas. So let me ideas. ask you a question: Does your sex trafficking fit into this topic in such a um, way that in, you in, go in a way? Give it so. You, it, oh, it, you're it, gonna go for a stretch here. Give it a try. It's it's in in a way it does because. There is a lot of debate on how much we should normalize the idea mm-hmm. of sex work. Mm-hmm. And there are many libertarians who are like, look, not for my household. I don't. Want right. I'm like, not, I'm I not don't... like, hey, my daughter or my wife right. is going to do this because we're a little right. tight on bills this week. Right. Yeah. They're, <laughs> right. They, like there's a lot of guys that are and, and gals that I know that are opposed to it. And they're like, look. I think it's a terrible idea. I think there's the, you know there's moral problems. I think you know whatever you know uh, some of them are for religious reasons. Some of them are just being, people are like yeah I just don't I, I think that's more of a personal connection that you mm-hmm. that you have with somebody not just something you that you use right. any old any old time. Yep. But at the same time they're going to say but I'm not going to interfere with you doing it. Same thing for drugs, right? Yep. There are people that are like look why do you need to get high? You know, why do you need to, why do you need to have your mind club? I, like I question, I question people, right? That. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think it's the same concept. Like you don't have to support it. You could be like, look, you, you might be disappointed if your children get high all the time. Yep. Like, right. And it's okay. You know, uh, but the question is, should they go to jail for it? No, absolutely not. Should they go to jail for selling it? No, they should not go to jail for selling it. Maybe to their room. <laughs> right? Yeah, like dude, in you're your house, like in my house. Come right. on, man. Right. Yeah, it's a different story. My boys are older. My boys are past that. Now. Okay, gotcha. not in my house okay, anymore. So, so, okay. so, so, yeah. But you know, like my son, he's he's three. He's uh-huh. definitely not selling drugs now. But let's just say that he now? grew up and he was like, <laughs> "Hey, dad, 15. I'm eight. I think it's time." Right. <laughs> maybe he was fifteen, right? And then I find out that he's selling some drugs. Hopefully, we'll have it resolved by then. You right. Because that's like in what? Uh, that's in twelve years. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, in twelve years, Libertarian Party will have got this worked out. Um, but let's just say in 12 years, we don't let's, let's say much of the nation is still, you know, opposed to, 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 to drugs and legalization and all that. I would hope that he's not selling drugs. Well, yeah, I don't you know? want him. I don't I want don't, him to right. be a drug dealer. Right. Because right now there's nothing good about being a drug dealer, even if I don't think it should be a crime. Mm-hmm. Now, when it's no longer a crime. My opinion may be different. Like, what happens if he opens a dispensary? He says, hey. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. Because depending, you know, and a lot of it depends on how it's happening. If he's on the corner packing a gun because he might have to shoot somebody mm-hmm. so that he can sell some weed or whatever, then I'm not going to be happy. Right. If he's opening a dispensary, yeah, don't care. That's he's, fine. Hey, Good for you. 
Small business. Yeah, small business. Small business. You know, Listen, like, I, 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 what's the difference between that and selling pottery? I mean, what? other than you can't get pottery, high on pottery. pottery you just, <laughs> see, what, see what you see, did there? He okay. is selling, you can tell people, my son sells pottery. He said, like, what? I got you. Trust you. Me. Stop by the store. Out. You'll find out what I'm what? talking Inadvertently, about. Inadvertently, man. I figured but it listen, out. it's big business, especially in states that have already legalized right. it. Right. Um, so my thinking would be, I think that we've seen enough mm-hmm. now, because it's been, in some states it's been legal for right. a while. Right. I think we've been able to look at it now and go, you know what? The world didn't blow up. Right. You know, because they legalized it. So you, I think we finally come to this point where we go, okay, wait a minute. Right. You, you know, we're not going to. Now, I think that we have to kind of, I think we have to decriminalize it completely. Right. Because I think if you leave it up to interpretation, which mm-hmm. is the fear, it's like if you, if because if you just kind of like, well, we're not going to enforce it. That leaves yeah. you too open that a cop can be in a bad mood. Oh, I'm going to enforce this today. Like, right. I, I don't want to travel down that road. That's the same let's, young kid that I saw the other day. Yeah. You know, let's, let's get him. I'm going to show him. Let me ask you a quick question then. So why do we think the real reason is why it's not just legal everywhere? What's the reason? Um, my understanding is that in like the late 1930s, the paper industry was opposed to the hemp industry mm-hmm. because hemp had so had a lot of utility. And the paper industry said, hey, this is a competition that we don't particularly like. And the best way that a business can fight against competition is using the government. And so, therefore, they they did lobby the government. And then I think there, there was a huge campaign. And at the time, my understanding is that smoking marijuana wasn't really huge. It wasn't nearly as popular as it is now. Right. But it was happening. But they made these exaggerated claims. You could you could see the old videos where you know I, I'm trying to remember what they're called now. Oh man, they had some weird names. But they they were basically made it out like if you smoked one joint, you were just gonna go crazy. Mm-hmm. You're just gonna be some weirdo. <laughs> and they basically frightened everybody, and they made that a big deal. And so therefore, you basically throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, COVID. You, you 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 huh? COVID. No, yeah, it's the COVID argument. Make it so bad, so horrible, oh. this, and we all just fall for it. We're like, oh, right. that's why. And okay. so, and so, then you end up, um, uh, then then you end up with you, uh, making everything about it illegal, mm-hmm. right? So the whole plant was illegal to to use any part of it, basically. So that's my understanding. I don't know. I've never really done. Okay, so why do you think it holds true still now? Then? I think what happened is. Um, now this is aside from any theories about how, like maybe the CIA sent crack to the black neighborhoods to, to fight against the black Panthers or whatever. You know, we're still, you you know, know. We're still just talking about weed. Right, 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 right. right. I mean, right. So I, but, but I understand that there's a, there's a lot of overlap okay. in, in what happens with drugs. So I'm going to, I'm just going to set aside any theories that the government was basically, um, pushing drugs and then at the same, you know, causing problems uh-huh. with drugs so that they could create a problem that needed to be solved. Okay. I think largely what happened is that we have a society that for whatever reason, they fell for whatever BS that they were sold, whether it was the stupid ads that they saw on TV, Mm -hmm. whether it was being afraid that, oh my goodness, all these black people are doing something and we don't want to, you know, we're we're good. We don't be like the black people. We're upstanding white folk, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I just think it was the, the, the base, the root cause is that, People are gullible and they don't really look and say, is this really a big deal? And, you know, and, and so they, but you, what is it? If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Right. I think mm-hmm. kind of like a, they didn't stand up for seeking out the truth. So they fell for whatever was passed to them from whoever it came from. I think and that's it doesn't, still it kind to of today matter. though. Like what's stopping today? I think today? so. I think that over time people have uh, got that perception, right? Like it's just kind of continued in that perception. And here's the other thing. There are... Do I want to say that? Oh, whoa. Are you filtering your thoughts? No, no, no. Because that's not like you. Usually just on the after you regret. Like, gosh, there are people who use drugs who are losers. For real? Right. Uh And and, and the the easiest thing to influence somebody is the negative stuff. Right. Which we had a conversation about regarding the Libertarian Party earlier. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That Uh is for another day. Oh. So, I, I, and, and like, I've known people who are like, dude, I, I don't, I, I think that people that smoke pot are lazy. And I'm like, have you seen half of corporate America? <laughs> because really? there it is. Because uh-huh. I've known some people that are some super duper hard workers and, and they are super duper high all the time. Let me give you two examples of that, of both sides of that. Right. right. Okay. So um, one time when I was younger and had friends and stuff, I, I, I was 
always around people who are getting high all the time. Mm-hmm. Like that's just what they did. Right. And so I, I remember one night that some people I were with and like, hey, they started smoking. I had to leave out for a few minutes. I came back, you know, an hour or so later. And, and I will tell you, they're just sitting there. Yeah. Just staring at the TV. They're watching the Three Stooges. And, and just, just, they weren't harming anybody. But there's right. that level of that's what they're doing. Right. So I get the lazy argument. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have a person who's far closer to me than that. Somebody who's been with me my whole life. Maybe a sibling. Okay. Okay. Who um, got high all the time. Still, from my best of my understanding, still does. And, and here's what I point this out. Uh, so I remember one day I was over at his house. And um, like he'd smoke every day. That was right. the thing for him. So I, I, and at that time he's waiting tables, stuff. He's restaurant management type of stuff. And so one day I was at the house and he come running back in. He's supposed to be going to work. And he comes running back in and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And this is what he says. He goes, I'm looking for my apron. And I looked at him. I said his name. I said, you have it on. He right. goes, oh, and he said a cuss word. He goes, haven't smoked all day. Right. And that was real life for him. That it truly brought him into a clearer mind. Right. That he could function at a better level. Right. And I'm like, okay, if nothing else, there's medicinal right yeah. there. Right. And, and so, like, we have the conversation about church and how right. does the church stand on it. And um, I've actually, I was actually, I was on another podcast, not no, not as good as this one, but so. I was I was on another one, and we they brought that up specifically about you know where's where do I stand as a pastor right, right. on those terms? and we went through all of that. Um, but I think the point is is that um, I, I have to be willing to outside of my faith understand that people have freedoms. Right. Not everybody's a Christian, and and it's right. funny because some people get thrown off because well you know pretty well I'm a pretty strict Christian. Like I, 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 for my walk with God, I personally, and I walk a pretty tight line and I expect that of other Christians. He makes me write Bible verses every time I swear. I sure enough should. That's a, that's not a bad idea. Like that's, a, that's something we should legit check into. But so I, but it's inside of that. I also understand that not everybody's Christians and there are these right. other arguments. And so I can truly go, they're fine. I right. don't have to control them because right. I have my faith and right. my faith doesn't need to dictate your right. beliefs. And unfortunately, I think that's part of the thing that holds all of this up. Yeah. Especially in the South. The mm-hmm. South, the church has influence, whether they should or not. Right. Okay. Um, and and so I think that a lot of times they're they're keeping the Christian base happy because right. there's this fear of if we legalize marijuana, well, now those Christians are gonna turn against us. Right. And unfortunately, that's probably true. And I don't think it should be. Right. I think if we practice our faith the way that we're called to, what they do next door shouldn't affect my faith right and 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 i think that's there there's a certain amount of fear that it will affect your family your life whatever right and, and i've met people they're like um I, i'm trying to think of you know how much i like to divulge i like to uh, yeah, something uh-huh. you know and and off the cuff I'm, and then i'm like okay well, maybe i got uh, yeah there's been times i, I, do, that, I do that at the church i'm like, like hey you know mm, this and i go oh okay, uh, okay well see what it's out there now and my wife um, sits up front every week and it's just like oh no i don't i don't know what this is going to be so, i don't know i don't know how this but, is going to go but, but I've, I've i've known people who had personal relationships and they didn't want to have anything to do with it because they felt like it would be a negative on their relationship okay right and i'm like the answer is maybe Mm-hmm. Depends on who you find. So, like, I knew a fellow, and he was a nice guy, but he was one of those losers. Oh, okay. And he, here's the story. He, um, we actually got high one day, and he's actually a very annoying person to get high with because he just like kept talking and like wouldn't let you just chill. And you're like, dude, I'm trying to chill. Oh, yeah. That, so that is the point of when you get high, you just want to chill. Sometimes. Like, okay. All right. Know. Okay. And it depends on what you get high with, I guess. You know. Oh, so if you're yeah. doing cocaine, then I guess you want to do the opposite. Be super busy or whatever. Yes. Um, so house gets clean, car gets right. washed. Man, right. I could really, yeah, never mind. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, the, the uh, the, 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 the white collar America is Adderall, so that's the one got it. Wants, but... Yeah, okay, so anyway, but uh, so so he he would get high, he would get high all the time, and then it's uh, he got in trouble because he was living at home with his mom, he was like 24 or something like that, and uh. He had previously been divorced already. Oh, I don't goodness. know the okay. nature. I don't know the nature of his That's, divorce. So I don't know if right. it had anything to do with it. But there was. I, I think. I think it was. I think it reflected a certain level of immaturity. And uh, so his mom got upset and kicked him out. He was going to college, studying technology. Okay. And um, he was basically living in the woods. And then he said, eventually, it became where he had to really start putting more effort toward finding you know food and shelter right. and stuff like that so they didn't really couldn't focus on school so then he just dropped out of school and then when he dropped out of school they sent him a check because they were like well you know funds have been paid but 
you have the right. semester, so you get some of this money back, yep. which is supposed to basically go back. Yeah. And then he called up all his buddies and had a big party where he spent like $2,000 on drugs and alcohol for all his friends. Right? Hey, everybody will be a friend with you at that time. Right. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, it's a loser. Because there was nothing about that story that was good, that was a good decision on his part. Right. Right. If your mom kicks you out or if you... Uh, at some point you then, start going, wait a minute. Right. You you decide. You say, you know what? Right now, this is a negative impact on my life. It, it doesn't belong. It doesn't mean you can't pick it up later. It's just like, all right, look. Or, or, or apparently I'm not in a position to be able to smoke weed. Or you because, don't pick it up later. Right. Or Here's, maybe not. Because the not, reality right. of it is maybe that's something right. you go, try it. It's not good for me. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. Right. Some people, it's the same thing with alcohol. Stuff yep. like that. Some people go, hey, listen, dude, I can't drink because if I have one, I'm going to, I'm just yeah. going to fall in and it, it It's like the everything. person that says, I'll drink beer, but I won't drink liquor. Right. Because if I drink liquor, all these bad things happen, whether it's just a really bad hangover or they act like a fool. Yep. Or so I've known people that are like, I'll drink beer all day long, but I can't drink liquor because I start getting sad and crying and nobody like. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's here's, no. a, here's a beer. Best of luck to you. right here. Beer all no night. Liquor. <laughs> beer all night. All right. So, you know, but uh, so, so yeah, I think, you know, know thyself is very mm-hmm. important. And, you know, and, and whether or not you can come back to something is a decision that you have to make. But sometimes you have to make a decision and say, look, this is not appropriate. But here's the thing that people kind of make a mistake with that story. It Drugs was not his problem. No. It was just the symptom of a of bad decision making all over the place. Yeah, getting two thousand dollars and saying, "Hey, let's do this with it." Right. Yeah. You know, so like this, this was you know, so the, the if you're have if you're gonna have a problem with drugs, um, chances are you're gonna have a problem whether it's legal or not. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think there's gonna be. I think we we would see very. I don't want to say very. Few, Maybe initially there might be a if we decriminalized it overnight, we might see a, a, a sharp rise where people, you know, it's kind of like you never get anything. And then all of a sudden you get it. You know, your, your dad never let you have candy. And then all of a sudden you get your first taste of candy and you're like, I'll eat the whole bag. See, I just don't right? know. I don't know. I think that, that does happen. I don't know if that applies to weed, though. Well, because weed, if you think about it, weed isn't that hard to get. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is, I think if you grow up in a house where you're strictly monitored, and then in that Christian sudden, home, then, right? Yeah, or whatever home. Uh-huh. But you're strictly no, I'll, monitored. I'll say, I think a Christian and, home tends to be like that. And then you get out, and I and I've heard stories like that. Like mm-hmm. I had a friend that went to Bible college, and he said, "Dude, you know who are the craziest kids there?" And I was like, "Who? Those and Christians?" He said, "Pastors' kids." Pastors' kids. Trust me. He said. They don't get any decision making skills, many of them. Right, no. And he said, so when they get to college, what happens is Whoa. they have to make all of these decisions and they've they've not learned how to make them by making incremental bad ones along the way. So they make huge bad ones repeatedly for a while. And, and you, you know what's funny that because that is a, that's a real problem. Yeah. PKs are just the, these horrible kids mm-hmm. because they see them, they lost their minds. Right. And so I was always an advocate of, I want my boys to have freedom. According to their age. Right. Like, you know, if you're 12, I'm not going to say, hey, here's the crack house here. Come hang out so you can see. No, no. But there wasn't, okay, I'm going to let you go here right. by yourself. Right. Like, uh, like as our boys are growing up, they go to the skating rink. Yeah. Or, you know, the, like right. I was never one to keep them sheltered because that, that's real right. life right there. Right. Yeah. That, but that would happen with people, you're right, not just Christian homes. That if you yeah. have this, you're not doing nothing. We're going to keep, we're just going to stay right. on top of you. They get a little bit of freedom. They go, yep. wait a minute, I can get out of here and I go buy some weed real quick. Right. That maybe, yeah, but and then, whole, then and then like, it all kind of goes to health in, in many cases, right? So I think if we if we decriminalized overnight, we would see a sharp surge. So, but then I think it would level off. Well, hold on. So what's and the then it wouldn't be any different than alcohol. If you don't decriminalize overnight, what what's the alternative? Well, I think what ends up happening is then you have a slower progress, and then you no no. Actually, what's the option though? If you're saying we can't do it overnight, oh, I didn't say we can't. No, no, no. I'm just I'm just talking about like in you know when people make these arguments and say like all these bad things will happen right i think you might see some initial bad things if we did it overnight like that right okay and and the reason i say that is because we've held it from people for so long that people that might be willing to try it but are a little bit leery because they don't want to you know buy from the cd drug dealer or something right. like that you know and there are people like that i've yeah. met them you know i i think what you would find is that some people would overdo it a little bit some of those would Will, are the kind of person that would always overdo it no, matter, no what. matter what right and some of them would overdo it initially but then level off because it's just like something okay. new and fun. so so what's novelty so novelty, what, yeah everybody so gets what you're it. saying though is by doing this it presents a problem <clears throat> okay so then how can you look at this and go wait a minute this is what we want to do mm-hmm. but ultimately we don't want to cause that problem so what's the solution then to well, say okay we don't want to 
we don't want to corrupt everybody right from the start. I, like, how I do am, you lean into this? I honestly am more of a fan of ripping the Band-Aid off. Okay. So I would prefer... So you, you'd rather have that problem? I would rather have that problem initially. I am I think we just need to be aware of it and prepared, right? Like, that, that's it. Like, like that's going to happen. And the reason that we would have that problem is because it was self-created, because we restricted everybody from it, right? So it's not... The problem isn't the drugs. It is literally a phenomenon, in my opinion, that goes with the territory when you are introduced with something. It's like somebody becomes a new Christian. They're reading the Bible like 17 hours a day, and they're going to like every single church service they could possibly go to. Right. And then eventually they kind of level off and they figure out where they're, they're, they're best to fit, right? Right. You know, and, and, and I think you know, the same 17 thing. 17 hours it's in like, every church service. It's like, that's, who, that's the best who's, who, who's the worst person to ever meet? A brand new vegan. A brand new vegan. Well, cause... I know because I lost a friend over it because <laughs> he got so into it and I tried to work with him. And then I lost my cool. I, I'll, I'll admit it was my fault. But I lost my cool and I cussed him out one day. Literally, I cussed him out because I thought because it, 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 the tension was just riding mm -hmm. and riding so hard. And I was like, dude. How, how, do, you, how do you know somebody's <clears throat> vegan? Right. They tell They'll you. They tell you. <laughs> They're right. going to tell so, you. Um, but when, pe when people get into something new, they're just really excited about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. you, and, and it doesn't matter whether they're a child or an adult. People get excited. And that's a good thing, okay. right? It's so, not a bad but, thing. But here, here's what I want us to look at. Because we, we actually have a, another issue going through town. And like, hey, we're going to try this. And then I actually thought the people were in charge of us. Hey, but this is going to cause this problem. They go, yeah, but sometimes we're going to make our problems. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. If you know it's going to cause this problem, why don't you, before you release it, right. why don't you see how you can help kind of curb that problem? So you're saying you think this is going to be a problem, which is probably true. I think it would be okay, if we so, did it all at once across okay, so, the nation. So, okay, so then, well, actually, to be honest with you right now, it wouldn't be a cross nation because right. there are a number of states that already have. Correct. So, so are, is there a way then? Because you're saying this could be a problem. So I like the idea of, I like to kind of know what we're getting into. Right. And that way if something comes up, you go, got to fix for this. We right. do a lot around the church and yeah. stuff. So let me ask that question then. So there's probably some validity in the fact that, hey, it might, might go back crap crazy for a little while. Whatever I say has validity. <laughs> okay. Just throwing that out there. I, I talk to you quite a bit. Well, then you should I know don't... about all the valid things I say. I know some of them. Well, so, maybe you're just not paying attention. So, all right, that might be it also. <laughs> but inside, of the, like, see, for a second, I'm like, wait a minute, this dude really thinks he's valid all the time. So, how do we... <laughs> I validate <laughs> no, no, myself give, every morning. Don't give that... No, I'm like, well, yeah, I'm like I go to the mirror. Say, and I, I, go, I wish I could zoom in on the camera. I go to the mirror and I'm like, you are great, you are awesome, and you're going to kick ass today. Right? Something like that. You ever see Cool Runnings? I did. Well, so, I'm the guy... Minute, what does this have to do with What do you see question? in the mirror? I see pride... Power and one badass mother that don't take shit from nobody. That's me. Okay, anyway, you so we're talking about drugs. I'm not the guy who's gonna say I'm not the guy who's going to say that. Like I, I truly did a podcast and the guy who's doing he goes, listen, he goes, I'm a Christian who says the F word. I said, Well, I'm a Christian who does not say the F right. word. I don't usually swear, so, but I was I was yes, quoting he does, the line. All the time. All the time. All I the had time. to say it because I was quoting no, no. it. It's oh. like when I sing rap songs. I have to. Oh, no. See, that's why I can't listen to Wu-Tang anymore. Like, I like I, like I, I would find out. I'm like, oh, no. Can't do that one anymore. And there's certain songs I've had to let go. Really? Real life, yeah. Because I, I don't want... I, I, here's what happens. If I start... Oh, it's because of Christianity. Yes. It's because oh, of my okay. walk with God. Cause, yeah. Because I, like, I know I that you have around. a mixed family, so you get the pass, right? Oh, is that... No, no, no. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't looking for a When you're at the because... barbecue, you get the pass, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm good. Yeah. Like, I wasn't like, hey, that dude's white. You can't listen to Wu-Tang. No, I can't listen to Wu-Tang because of the language. <clears throat> I, so I would you. listen to like, oh, no, I can't say those words. So I've, I guess I got to just kind of put it out. There's a few songs I can still listen to. Some religious rappers. I got you, man. No, no, it's not good. It. It's not good. So anyway. I, so, so, all right. So what is the, the fix, plan, then? The fix. Like, how do we say, okay, this is probably going to be a problem. Let's avoid this. Let's let's because here's what will happen. Right. If you've noticed that now, people are going to use that as an argument about right. why we shouldn't so, do this. Here's the thing. I think naturally in America, the way that our country is set up provides a fix naturally, or or I don't want to say a fix, but it provides a um a, a meaningful solution. And that is we have checks and balances all over the place. Okay. So you really don't like it's really hard to just in one fell swoop everything you know like even when we instituted like obamacare right mm -hmm. it was like okay well we're instituting it but it doesn't go into effect until this day and then only these things go into effect okay. and then this all right, so, okay. right so everything is really like but, we but don't, hold on but they put things in place to say right. hey they, okay and, so now i'm asking you and, what are you putting in place and, 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 and i don't think that we necessarily have to because i think what's going to happen is we will naturally i i think it's harder actually to rip the band-aid off because you have to have so much support and you would have to do it like all the all these things would have to be into place all at once I'm just saying, 
I'm, I think it's fair to acknowledge people's concerns. But then when we come back and we say, all right, so then they say, well, what's the answer? Right, well, the answer is already here. We have 37 states that have decriminalized it um, to some degree. Mm -hmm. We have a federal government that has not. Many of those states ignore the federal government. The federal government doesn't put in a lot of effort, always, to go in and fight right. the states necessarily. Yep. You still can get in trouble for it. Right. So we're still playing. We are playing the inc incremental game, whether we like it or not. OK. Right. So so when somebody says, well, I think uh, this would happen. You're right. That would happen if we ripped the bandaid off, which I would be OK with. However, we do not live in a society where it is actually easy to rip the bandaid off because we have autonomous states. Right. We have checks and okay. balances. And so you have some states that have decriminalized it. Thirty seven now. Um, and then you have had, what's 50 minus 37? Um, 12, uh, 13, right? Mm -hmm. So you got 13 states who haven't for whatever crazy reason. I don't know why, right? And the 37 have done it to some varying degrees. I think some of them have done it for medicinal purposes only, like Florida. It starts there, yep. Florida is only mm -hmm. medicinal. Yep. Other states are recreational. Um, I think Colorado is a recreational state, but I, I could be uh wrong. Yeah, recreation. Yes, yes. That's right. Yep. Right. So, you, so you're seeing this. Mm -hmm. And so then what ends up happening is you're slowly pulling that Band-Aid off, right? Which is not nearly as bad. Okay. And we have time. So uh, Colorado has done recreational. So Florida, who has not, can watch them. Right. And then if we see some problems that we don't like, hey, here's we what can we can brace do. for those. Rather than right. do nothing. Like, right. we're just around, oh, we I can now, do it. Because it's not ripping the Band-Aid off. So what we're doing is we're, we're, we're you, watching. We keep watching. You know like, what the mm, argument is along, along with this is, is the fact that, okay, so here it's medicinal purposes only. Right. But um, here's what I found out. It's very easy to get yes. your card. It's yeah, I've very, heard. very I've easy. Heard. So if we're going to be honest, like, who are we kidding? Like, right. Let's, like, listen, there are people who have their card. Right. They're fine. Right. And that goes in toward the argument because you yeah. could say, hey, guess what? We think we've only pulled the Band-Aid this far, but we've actually... We've actually it's way back here. Yeah, it's, back it's, a yeah we've got, we're And guess what? More. Society is not collapsing. So let me ask you a question. Okay, so we are a home rule state. Okay. Okay. So that gives us freedom amongst oh individual governments. Home rule, get, home rule gets tricky. Okay. Right. So should Duval, Jacksonville... Be able to just unilaterally go. You know what? We're going to make this legal here. We're not going to. The rest of the state can try to catch up with us. Yes, I think so. I should city council members push for that. Is that a hill um, worth dying on, or do we ride this one a little bit? I guess that should be a question more directed towards me. Uh, I. But... <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Okay. All right. <laughs> do you believe in home rule? I do. Okay, so should the city of Jacksonville be able to do their own thing when it comes to drugs? Yes. So if you were a city council member... <laughs> You're very good. See, man, if we had planned it like this, this would have been so much better. This yeah, you got to Really, this it. would have been brilliant I got to like hold this. my composure. Okay. Okay. So so if you were... So if when you get elected as right? city council... Yes. Uh, region 5, right? I'm uh, at large five. Or at large five. At I'm sorry, not region 5. At large 5. Um, region is, 5? Where did that even come from? Uh, we have a region 5 for... Our, party for for our libertarian party whatever we're dude. in reason go, just go so my bad. all right fine um so do you feel that based on your interaction with fellow citizens across the city as you've been working on getting out there and getting your name known and right and talking to people mm -hmm. do you think that is a hill worth dying on here in jacksonville or are there pressing matters that you think are more important okay now and I that would, we should wait on the state yes okay no, no no here's the thing okay can i find a balance in between there sure and that yes i do i mean you're the council that, member yeah right okay. i elect you to so, do it all for me and, and i have and, nothing to yeah, say there's actually a lot of people who believe that which is shameful right, right. um but here's what i would say i'd say you know what i think that we do have other pressing issues here in town um i would like to like it looking at me personally like hey you know what i don't like our spending stuff along like right. I, those things have to be brought in anyway so but do i think that we could Wait for the state? I say, no, I don't think we... Because the state doesn't necessarily seem to be showing any, unless you know something I don't. No. The state's not showing anything. Like, hey, we're about to travel down this road. No. Uh, so would I say day one, let's start passing legislation again? We, no, 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 I'm not going to... Like, I'm not going to because I, I don't think we're there yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, for me, there's other things. Let's get to it. But I do I leave it off the table? I don't think so. I think this is something I go, guys, okay, so here's what I want to get on. And right. do I tell people as I'm campaigning, hey, guys, I'm for it. I would tell them. Right. I'm for it. I'm going to make my stand, my usual stand up. I don't think you have to go do it just because right. it's legal. You don't have to go do it. 
But if you are and you want to, I think you should be allowed to. Um, and would I tell people that I would actively push for that? I right. might. I mean, I really haven't. I just kind of have the conversation where I say I'm open to it. And nobody's really said, you're going to push it on day one. That's political people. Right. Political people. Are you going to make that day one type stuff? Yeah. Okay. Like everything can't be day, day one, one, people. Jeez. Exactly. But only political people ask that question. Yeah. When you talk people just going about their business, you say, hey, I think we should be legal. They go, that's right. And they're, right. And they're like, okay, dude, go make it happen. Right. And they're like, that better be your first priority. Right. Which is what party people do. Yeah. So I would look at, I would go, I don't. Stop doing that, people. It's yeah, it truly ridiculous. is. Knock it off. Uh, Leave something for day two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I get all done on day one, what I do the rest of the four years, I just right. chill, I guess. You're going to let this man get paid and do nothing, do nothing? on day two? Make me do whatever? something for <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I guess I would say, hey, I don't think, okay, we get in, we take care of the things that I say, okay, these are high priority things for the mm -hmm. city. Okay. Because some of the things I'm talking about affect everybody. The weed thing doesn't affect everybody. Right. right. Okay. So I would look at that. I go, hey, I, if the state doesn't seem to be progressing, I don't see any reason why we can't jump right. in on it and be like, hey, you know what? Because here's the thing. Even if they look at it and go, hey, you know what? Home rule really isn't going to cover you very well for this. Mm -hmm. Now we've started the conversation. Right. Though. Now we've started the talk where maybe right. other cities go, wait a minute. Yeah. And it, even if they find out, hey, now we push the state. Right. And now the state is forced yeah. to start doing something. Well, I think also different cities, different municipalities, they, they have different things that might be an issue for them. Yes. Right. And so you might have one where like, hey, they're having a huge meth problem where another one, um, they got drugs, but it doesn't really seem to be like, other than the fact that it's illegal, it doesn't really seem to be caught. And then some other ones might be like, man, we got a huge gang problem here, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know? So, and then, and then there might be things unrelated to drugs, you know, like I know that you have recently set your eyes on strippers, right? That seems so not right. What I, what I have set my eyes on is the prop, the private property rights of the people who own the strip clubs. Jeez, I have not gone to the strip club. I've, I've not gone to the strip club. I do not condone the actions of the strip club. I'm simply saying they have a right to exist. So Jeez. yes. So what's going on? So let me let me let me explain this a little bit fuller. Okay. Now that the joke is out, and yes. I'm, I'm I'm done having a little bit of fun for the time being. That, fun for who? I was having fun. All I right. laughed heartily. All right, go ahead. You know, so there is a strip club in town. And um, that looks I think like it might called, be two. I think uh, that looks two? like they're trying to go after so, another one. So there's one called Mascaras. It's actually right down the road, like what two miles How, from is here? It, is it that close to here? I think it's like two miles from here. It's you not think? Very far. Oh, yeah. What yeah. do you mean you think? It just he's like, dude. I can tell you, if you take this right, you get the, the thirty seconds sooner. Don't so, give me this junk. I Liberty wife is a real estate agent, and she probably <laughs> would know better than me. <laughs> she doesn't want to be any part of this. No. You are canceled. You are canceled. This is now the last one we do because right. she said that's it. That's You're done. It. You are canceled. All right. Uh, so, wife's gonna cancel. It's so 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 we've had several con uh, not congressmen, um, council members yes. who have actively boasted about trying to either make it harder or get them shut down. Yes. And this is inappropriate. Not because we necessarily like strippers. Right. As we've talked about, we know that Pastor Tubb is a pastor in the typical fashion. So he is is not a fan of, you know, you know, personally a fan of stripping and right. and using profanity and some of these other things mm -hmm. that are very typical of the religious community. Right. Right. Um, however, he is also a libertarian. And so he understands that it is not the government's role to go and do that, to go and say we don't morally like what you're right. doing, so but therefore we're going to use our power to either make it harder for you or shut you down. That is inappropriate use of power. So I, I, I made, when they first did the first one, and it, you know, it did get shut down after the first year. They shut okay. it down. Uh, so I made a pretty big stink about that one. So now they're trying to push this other one. And so, the, you know, we have these online forums of, you know, local news stations on Facebook right. and stuff like that. And so people will comment. So I get in there, I kind of chime in and I'm kind of like, all right. And so there was this guy, we were kind of going back and forth. And then he finally makes a comment, well, if that's how you are, then I can't support you as a candidate. And I said, listen, I said, I understand that you may not agree with this. I said, if for some reason you're against uh, private property rights, I said, I, I get that. And if I lose your support in this one, that's fine. I said, but I hate it because I would defend you and your house right. just as much as I'm defending this right. club. Right. And that's where I left it at. But Because yep. for me, that's truly how I, I don't, I'm not going right. to the strip club. Right. But I have a whole thing about how that can change. Right. If Christians became Christians, went and made right. disciples, society and, changes. And, and that, is a, that, is, uh, that is a that's all separate from government. It, yes. It, it's not from the government has no say is, in it at all. That is it's literally, yeah, that is literally one person reaching out to another person and saying, 
I think that there is a better way to live your life. Let me connect with you and let's have a conversation. Can, can, all right. Can I get my minute right? explanation? Do it. Okay. So I, I, as being that, I always often, I use the Bible as my reference of this is why we don't have to do this. Right. Okay. So the apostle Paul, when he went into towns and through the book of Acts, he would go into towns. And when he went into new towns, he would go in and talk to people about Jesus and make them disciples. Right. Okay. He never once went to the political leaders and said, right. Hey, Y'all need to pass some laws to make those people act like Christians because then everything would be okay here. He never once right. did that. But what they what we see in the book of Acts is that Paul went into these areas and people started changing. Mm -hmm. And as they started changing and coming to Jesus, society changed. In right. fact, at one point, they get together and they go, this Paul's killing us. Right. He's ruining our businesses. This is what's going on. Not because of government, but because Paul right. went in and made disciples. So Christians have gotten lazy. Right. Okay. What they want to do is they don't want to go make disciples. They want to just put people in office to make people act the way we want right. them to act. The strip club is a prime example. Make them just act like this. No, right. no, no. Okay. Drugs, same type of thing. Just right. keep a bunch of laws so that they don't go do this. Right. No, that's not what this is about. Right. And so I have this separation of, I have my faith and in my faith, I go, I don't want to do any part of that stuff. I'm not going to do those things. Right. But I also know not everybody's a Christian. So if I want to change what's going on, right. it's not laws. We have laws in place right now that are not changing the problem. People are right. still doing certain things. Or making it worse. Exactly. So my thing is this, allow them to do what they're going to do. If we want to change them, bring them to Jesus. Right. And, yeah. and that's kind of my thinking. And, and that's how non-interference generally best yep. works, right? You don't interfere by force nope. because, as we talked about earlier, when you impose the use of force, all you do is you raise the cost of doing this, which many people are going to do until they change, have a change of heart, yep. right? Like, there are some women out there that are like, look. I'm a stripper. I'm an OnlyFans gal, whatever the case may be, right? Can and, I ask a question that's, real quick? that's what they do. What is OnlyFans? It is... Uh, the guy here references different types, and I and I don't know if it's something I should even go look I, up. To be honest, I, no, with you. don't go look. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Okay, up. all right, all right. I, okay. I think I went to the the general website once, and then I realized what it was because I kept hearing people like, "Oh, she's got an OnlyFans." I'm like, "What is an OnlyFans?" Oh, is it only women on an OnlyFans? I think there's dudes on there too. But basically, what it is, like if I'm a, if I'm a person that wants to display, um, it's kind of like um, person to person. Uh, no, it's like having a YouTube channel. Okay, that's private that people can pay for to see whatever you're willing to show them. And I don't know to what degree. That's what OnlyFans is. Yeah, it's like a sexual site, but it's oh, it's, so 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 it's kind of like. Ooh, the, I'm really uh, glad that I didn't go look at this. Right. Okay. So it's kind of like um, he's, he's, this is not the point of our conversation. I, I know you had a bigger point in this, but it's the Uber of the pornography com uh, industry, right? So it used to be if you wanted to be in pornography in any way and make some money, right. you would find some business, some person. Yeah. You, know, you would go out to California. Some producer that... You know, actually, yep. you were trying to be a starlet in Hollywood and you would fail and then you would just... You do this of, instead? Your second best would be like, well, I guess I'll just go be a porn Still star. Still got this. Okay. Right? And so then you would find some, you know, some porn company and then you would get involved with them and then you'd have like all the producers and all that. Blah, right. blah, and they would take mm -hmm. care of all that. Well, now, you know, kind of like it used to be, you had to have like taxis and all that. Now you just have a car and you can do an you Uber. Do, right. Well, it's kind of the same, same thing. You know, you're like, hey, I, I want to be a podcaster. Well, I got a phone and I got a laptop and a microphone. Bam, I'm a podcaster. Like, look at me. Same concept for OnlyFans, I think. I've, again, I've never been there. I, don't, I, I just know a little bit about it. And... um. So I think that's like they that, like people pay they subscribe to a type thing. Yeah, I think it's a subscription. Like so, if you're popular, you get a lot of subscribers, right? Okay. So if I'm popular as a podcaster, then I get a lot of people that, yep. that subscribe yeah. to my podcast, right? On on YouTube or whatever. Right. And this is the same concept, except for everything's behind a paywall, um, because it's illicit. Oh, so, okay. Uh, to what degree? I have no idea what happens there. I don't know. You know, I I know there's all these different terms. I'm not terribly familiar with them. I know there's like cam girls and there's like uh, no, no no we're good i don't uh, need the examples so I'm, I'm trusting you oh porn okay. stars and there's there's all these different areas in sex work i'm not terribly familiar with all to me okay. it's just like it's sex work yeah <laughs> once again they have their right to i'm not getting involved right this is, a, this, is, this is a perfect <clears throat> example i'm not getting involved in. i don't even know right. what it was but okay right. best of luck and, and this is the point okay the, the point is that you going back to um um my episode on uh, I, I did a three-part series on three pillars of libertarianism okay. for me, for yep. how I see it. One of them was self-ownership. You own yourself. And I think we've had this conversation. Like, 
if I want to grow vegetables in my garden, mm -hmm. I can sell them to you. You can buy them. We can trade them. You can maybe you make woodworking products. Yeah, we barter, and then we barter. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I just give them to you because we're re really good friends. And I'm like, hey, and, man, and I got later a lot. on. I give you yep. something that I make, yep. and, and then yeah. you give me something, yep. whatever the case may be. Or I use them for my compost. I just grow them, and I say, wow, they look beautiful, and then I chop them all up and throw them back in the garden. Whatever, I mean, whatever I want to do with them. Yep. It's my property. Same thing with my body, right? The body, and, and we believe this, that you have the right to do whatever you want with your body. You have the right to choose if you want to go strip on a pole, if you want to make some, uh, garden some vegetables, if you want to make some woodworking, pastor a church, if you want to have a podcast. Only fan, if you want to. If you want to have it, only fans. And if you want to use drugs, mm -hmm. you know, I, it is no different to say, I have a cold. I don't, but I have a cold. Therefore, I'm going to take some NyQuil and go to bed. Then to say, you know what? I got some spare time. I'm going to hit some weed and watch this dumb show and laugh my butt off. It's the same concept, right? It's me deciding what I want to do with my body. So long as you're not telling me I have to do it. Right. And you're not stealing my stuff to go buy your drugs. Correct. You know, it's non-interference. Yep. You're not interfering with me taking NyQuil any more than you would be if I was to smoke pot or if I was to do cocaine. Now, let's talk about the big elephant in the room because marijuana is easy. People don't, people get high. They like, nobody's ever heard of somebody that dies from marijuana. Mm -hmm. What about heroin? Okay. So here's the question because you know, 10, in all honesty, libertarians, we really don't get too far into that. A lot right. of times we tend to stay marijuana right. and we kind of camp out there. We leave yeah. it there. And, and, and a lot of people might be like, okay, marijuana is fine. What about cocaine and heroin? You know? Okay. Now let me, let me be honest with you. Why does the drug determine how involved we ought to be in somebody else's life? So I'm going to play devil's advocate. Go ahead. So with marijuana, you know, um, I know a lot of people in corporate America smoke marijuana secretly. And so they're clearly productive and they have families. And I don't really hear too much unless you're a drug dealer. I don't generally hear that people who smoke pot are destroying their families other than maybe the occasional bum that might get kicked out of his mom's house or something right. like that. But overall, mm -hmm. I don't really see it as destroying families. Okay. However, if somebody does heroin, I mean, heroin's pretty bad and they're going to destroy their life and destroy their family and there are people that depend on them. So we've totally got to make it illegal. So how, what's, okay. the, what's the argument against all right, that? All right, that's so, that's, that's all right, me on. playing devil's advocate. I don't no, believe no, right. But Okay, so let me ask you this then. <clears throat> Should adultery be illegal? Should it be illegal? Illegal. Should the cops um, be able to come to arrest you for adultery? No. Okay, but no. doesn't adultery cause those same problems that you just listed? Yes. So guess what? Well, it can. No, it does. Like, adultery will break up families, and it will ruin jobs and households. Well, and stuff only else. if they get caught, because they're stupid. I guess that'd be the same thing with the other drugs then, too, right? If they do them well, they there don't get is. caught. And so I would look at it and go, you know what? We, we have to understand, if our, if our deciding, you're going to ruin your life. Right. Okay, but people can ruin their lives without any drugs. Right. People can make bad decisions, period. Dude, why you quit your job? That's a horrible idea. Right. So when do we when does it stop? If right. we say you're gonna ruin your life by doing drugs, okay. Dude, you can't, you're not allowed to quit that job anymore because you're gonna ruin your life. Where right. does it end? Right. So my thing is let's not get involved in any of that right. and allow people to make their own decisions. Right. Once again, would I suggest that they become cokeheads and stuff? Absolutely not. Right. right. But dude, what what right do I have to determine your life? Right. Right. Because what happens if the couple does it together and right. it never interferes with right. their life? And they, I know, so, I know some coquettes who function just fine in life. Okay, like they truly did. They, 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 right when they were both oh movie they, stars, yeah, movie stars, movie stars. <laughs> no, but like I had some friends that we worked together and stuff. Um, they weren't married or anything at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were doing they, they were they were always at work. They were always doing what they were supposed to do. But when they got out of work, they were hitting it hard. They were right. on the front. They're just snapping lines right. off the hood of the car. Right. Like they're doing stuff. Yeah, and I think that's the point. The point is. To what end will mm -hmm. we intervene in somebody's life? And we can always find a reason to intervene. Once it infringes on mine. Right. And um, and then the question becomes, well, what constitutes a good life? Right. So if I, let's just say that, um, let's say that you're making decisions in your life that are bringing less income for your family. Mm -hmm. Now, you're still paying your bills. Yep. You're not on welfare. I, I, I did. I did that. In right. My, I, I did that very thing. But I might look at you and say, "Well, Tub, you're only making sixty grand a year." Oh, at the and, church, I would love to make sixty grand a year. <laughs> you only make, now I'm, I feel like she. <laughs> but I might say, <laughs> "Just quit, Tub." Just... But, and, but I might say, "Tub, you're only making sixty grand as a pastor, and um, clearly you're not as good as those big mega church do pastors." Don't do it, dude. Right? Don't do it. 
So hold on. everything was fine until right now. Everything was fine. <laughs> so, so I, but, but again, this is very subjective. This is the point, right? right. So, so I might I might look and say, well, he's no Joel Osteen, you know. And Joel Osteen, keep, keep that thinking. Right, stop right there. Done. All right, all right. <laughs> that's but, where this conversation but, but again, ends. But again, I might may, I might try to make that decision for yep. you, right? And say, well, you, well, Joel Osteen's making plenty of money for his kids, and you're not making plenty of money, so you're doing the wrong thing. And then I might turn around and say. But you're a really good woodworker. I don't know if you are or not, but I might say you're a good woodworker and you could totally make more money off of woodworking. So stop so the therefore, church. therefore, you shouldn't be pastoring. You should be woodworking because instead of making 60 grand a year, you could be making 150 grand a year, right? Because that is no different than saying you, um, I mean, I mean it's, there, there is some differences because well, well, you're you're telling okay. somebody that their life isn't good enough and, in, and a heroin user who's because, let destroying me, their family. But, yeah, but let me tell right. you that I, as a Christian, have different earthly standards right. than other people that I'm like, no, I'm fine. Right. This is the house I want. Right. I right. could have more, but I don't want more. Right. That happens on every right. scale of things. Like, and, this is the house I want. This is the lifestyle right. I want. The homeless guy. Yep. Sometimes now, they're now let me, being homeless. Okay. Let me okay. let me connect these two because okay. st- I still feel I feel like they're disconnected, right? Because we've got this. Hey, you're just telling somebody that's not making enough money. That's not nearly as bad as saying that this person here is destroying his family because he's always strung out on crack, right? Like, and, and there is a distinct difference. There is. But here's what happened, and, I, and I'm not going to remember the quote very well. But C.S. Lewis made a very good quote okay. about Robert Barons. Okay. And he basically said, like, look, Robert Barons don't they don't have this end. Because they're just trying to satisfy their conscience. So they will constantly be hounding you, right? No, I'm sorry. He said the uh, uh, the, the people that do it to satisfy their own conscience, mm-hmm. they constantly try to be a, t- a tyrant t- uh, to you because they're satisfying their conscience, right? That's what this is. So even if you say, well, we're only going to take on the crackheads, eventually, in theory, you're going to run out of crackheads. Mm-hmm. But your conscience was well, see, what you were trying to satisfy. But now there's so this standard that says they're not living the, to their full potential. So therefore, the you stop? move on to maybe the pothead, who's not, who wasn't as big of a problem. Or alcohol. Right? Then you move on to then if you if you're successful there, then you move on to this person. Yep. And then eventually it does become we don't like the fact that you're a pastor because your kids should be getting bigger gifts on Christmas. Yep. Right. Where where is it? It end? doesn't end because the root of that um the, the root of telling somebody what they should do is for what you believe is their own good. Mm-hmm. And there is no end there is no end point for that. Right. And people don't realize that. That's where the problem is. There is no end point. So therefore, we should not be implementing laws. I think I've connected that all well, hopefully. We'll see. Right. Leave leave comments. Uh, you know, wherever you're watching, leave some they comments. Leave comments say, on this? No, people I mean, every, comments? Now, every now and then. The Should maps we... one got a lot of comments. Lord, just did no, they get some comments. No. None of them that I needed to comment back on. Like, so do, most of them were just so do, bad. Should I be doing more? To be like, uh, hey, y'all yeah, go ahead yeah, and comment on this. Like, I'll hey, see what I can do. Tell, tell DL where you screwed up on this. Oh, well, good Lord. You want the comments to come in? There they are. I do, that right? Like, take over at that point. So I think I think this is the issue with drugs is is that it it ultimately... Um, there are some drugs that kind of that sounds like it's a good idea to keep them criminalized, but ultimately, criminalize the criminalization of marijuana produces the same results as the criminalization of heroin, and that is you have um, a larger police force that goes kicking indoors and half the time doesn't find anything meaningful. Shooting up the wrong people, right? The wrong Shooting houses. the wrong people, flashbanging baby cribs, mm-hmm. all kind of crazy stuff. Those stories are out there. You can find them. Okay. And they're not that hard to find. But the same, we get the same results, whether it's for marijuana or for heroin. We're, we're not getting any different results in the Department of Violence. It is creating the same level of violence. If somebody gets shot over heroin, they could easily get shot over marijuana. Yep. And guess what? It happens. A bullet feels the same. Yeah, what what the purpose was. It has the was. same effect regardless of which drug is at, is at play here. And it has happened. People think that, oh, well, it's just weed. Nobody shoots over. They shoot over weed. Oh, they do. They, they shoot Absolutely. over weed. Yes, most Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. There, there is territorial issues oh, inside there are ter- of weed. I've heard of people that were selling like oregano in place of marijuana. And, My brother did that for a while. And they got they got payback. Oh, he, there no, was he got a, away with it. <laughs> I don't there know was, how. There was a guy when I, I was going to a private school, actually, a private yeah. Christian school, oh, believe geez. it or not, okay. in Dayton, Ohio. And there was a guy there 
who the rumor and it was, it was I think the the rumors were pretty true, but that he was trying to sell cocaine. I think it was cocaine on the side on the streets. He was trying to hustle. He was a teacher. And uh, no, he was a student. Student. Okay. Yeah. And he sold some. I think he sold mixed fl- flour and you know tried to dilute it. Right. And got caught. And got so put in the hospital. Take- I was going to say, somebody's not going to take well to that. Mm-hmm. And they got, he got put in the hospital yep. for that, right? Um, I've heard I, I've heard stories that happened along marijuana with like yeah. Reagan and stuff like that. Because on the street, the game is a little different. You take it off the street. Because on the street, it's underground. And there is a level of, um, uh, I want to say authority, but there is... There are rules, there's a hierarchy and there's, almost. There's almost this level there's of there's a level of enforcement mm-hmm. for behavior on the streets. Yep, and it's not that dissimilar to the beha- the enforcement through the government. It just tends to happen a little quicker, mm-hmm. and there are no judges. You don't you don't get brought before a judge. You know, on by the by, uh, by yeah, a cop. The trap house across like, the way isn't like hey, like if you've wronged me on the street, mm-hmm. I might just come and shoot you. Right, yes. like it's kind of how it works. Or I might bring my friends and we might beat you up. Right, like, and and there isn't this. There, there is no like. Okay, there's and a guess judge. What you now, guess and we're going to read through your rights. There's you, none of that stuff. You, right, you now have more people right to be arrested because now they've committed the right. crime of violence. You know, right. whatever that. Right, so there's that actually case. been a real crime. Now there's more issues right. that are happening inside. Right, of it. so technically you had a theft issue, be stolen or cheated right. or whatever. So you fraud. have that fraud. So you have fraud, and then you have violence on top of that. So this is just right. growing. So the number of people that are involved, and what tends to happen is you hurt my boy, and now I'm going after your boy. Right. And it doesn't stop because you got me, all right, we're good, dude. No, it, right. it keeps escalating right. over something that in reality could have been avoided. Why? Just legalize it. Right. Just make it so they didn't have to be around that area I like at the all. word decriminalize, but we're not going to get into that. But just in case anybody's watching, they okay. make a big fuss. All right. You know. um, so I think we're done on this, right? I think we've I think so. covered. Uh, so if you're watching, if you're a libertarian, these are the kind of things that you need to point out to your non-libertarian friend. You need to point out to them and tell them, like, look, some of the same problems exist. You're going to get some of the same results that you're seeing now that you don't like, whether it's marijuana or whether it's crack cocaine, right? We're, you know, and, and then it gets exacerbated even further when you're talking about very hard drugs that don't seem to have any productive value whatsoever. Right. So on top of all that, then you might have somebody who's strung out on this very hard drug um, rather than maybe just having a good time with some pot. Okay, so so there's that. If you're a non-libertarian and you're listening, you're watching, you need to recognize that there isn't really that big of a distinction in terms of the results that we're getting when it comes to the different drugs. And that when libertarians look at this, what we see is a never-ending reason to in, impose your vision on somebody else's life. And then the one thing that we didn't top, uh, touch upon, and I'll just make a really brief point, is that when things are out in the light, we can address them better. Mm-hmm. So if there are problems with marijuana, or if there are problems with crack cocaine or heroin or whatever the case, if it's if it's out in the open, about addiction, you know? yeah, yeah, actual real addiction. If it's out in the open, it's a lot easier. Like think about it this way: How many people do you know say, "I don't drink because I'm an alcoholic"? It's okay to say that, mm-hmm. and most people respect it. Yep. But if you were to say, like you, you have can't to, say you're in shame, I, you go, oh, yeah, I've got a drug it's, problem. It's right now to say I'm shame. It's a shame to say I, I'm an addict. I'm a drug addict, mm-hmm. and I and I and I, I I I can't whatever whatever the case may be. Right, but we don't have that with alcohol. This, we we we've removed the shame factor. So right. If you really want to help people, you need to get them out in the open. So, and that's how we do it by decriminalizing all drugs. Sooner the better. Any okay. final words? Done. All right. I feel like we should. Are we going to arm wrestle here? I see. Now you just um, got this T-shirt on. I thought like it's I, go I, time I, or something. No, like, I, I I took the T-shirt off just because. I was getting kind of warm in here. It was getting okay. hot in here because of all the conversation. Got it. And just all right, so we're not, and, we're not arm wrestling or you know, anything. But here. now I'm calmed down. I'm chill. All you right. Know. Okay, put your sweater back on. We'll get yeah, to the next segment. Back. Yep. Okay. So uh, we're going to end this episode. We're going to make the next uh, segment a different episode just because we're right up at about an hour, oh. one minute, a little bit of over an hour here. So look for the next one. We're going to, um, you know, I, I said at the beginning that we're going to talk about uh, media and, the, and, 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 um, drawing a blank on it now. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. No, we're going to talk about, Media and fact checking. Uh, we've got something very interesting. So look for that. It's a, it'll be a separate episode. And but uh, other than that, we will see you. We're out. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, 
or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.